What's up, y'all? Welcome to Original Gamers Cast. I'm your host, Patrick Ryan, and I'm joined today, as always, by Nolan Brown. Hey, everybody. And this week, we have a very special guest from the Geeks Under Grace podcast, Shelly Walter. Hello. <laughs> How you doing, Shelly? I'm doing pretty good. Spring did break is last, treating me well. Did I say Walter? your last name? Yeah, so, yeah, Walter. 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 <laughs> I, and that I Walter you, stuff. You fussing at somebody about that Walter. Actually, I think I mean, it was Joe on the Geeks Under Grace podcast. Everyone, everyone, it's not, it doesn't bother as mu- me as much when people say it wrong. It's just when they say it wrong, they tend to spell it wrong. And I get really irritated when people spell yeah. it wrong. So, got to pronunciate the Walter. <laughs> so. Pronunciate. Pronunciate. Mm-hmm. That's, that's not the word I wanted. <laughs> Something with words. It's, when you when you pronounce the word pronunciate wrong. And that, you even English. That's something special there. <laughs> <laughs> well anyway, uh this week we're gonna be talking about the first generation of Pokemon, which is red, blue, and yellow. Or if you're Ooh. Japanese, it's red, green, and yellow. Uh, uh, we'll we'll get into that little discrepancy. Uh, a little bit later. Um, but before we do, let's shoot the breeze a little bit. Nolan, how's your week, man? Um, not too bad. It's a uh, it's a uh, spring break this week, so that's kind of nice. I don't have to yeah, worry about anything. So it's just like, hey, go to work and uh, come home. And then uh, for work next week is going to be the actual spring break camp, which is going to be both more fun and more annoying because it's basically going to be like summer camp. Mm-hmm. Which is cool because that means Tuesday basically I'm gonna get paid to go see a movie. Nice. So that's cool, and I'm pretty sure it's Zootopia, and I'm actually kind of excited because I wanted to see that. Oh, I, I wanted to see that too. And now I'm like, really okay. good, right? I mean, just mm-hmm. the scene with the sloths at the DMP was enough. <laughs> like, I need to go see this. Uh, but yeah, I like, saw a oh. gif of the sloth on Facebook and thought it was just a picture because it was moving so slow. And I was like, wait a minute, that thing's moving. Wait, that's, that's moving. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's so great. So what what is spring break camp? Is this something for work? or? Yeah, because um, my work is uh, like after school. Um, and I guess sometimes like before school, um, summer camp. Mm-hmm. And since it's spring break, it's like it's being treated like so- how we um, run the camp um, in summer. Okay. Which is like, okay, they show up at 7, and we will usually go somewhere and do a thing. Mm-hmm. So, like, next week there's a, go. There's two different museums that we're going to. There's the movie, the pool, and Jolly Jump slash Sky High. Okay. So, yeah. Mm. So. Sweet. Mm-hmm. All that extra right. time. Yeah. Well, Shelly, how's your week been? Oh, it's been pretty good. I have done not a lot of stuff. I went to Pike Place the other day and got myself some new dice for D&D. So that was cool because my D&D, nice. dice, D&D dice were just kind of poison. <laughs> they were cursed, I swear. They, they were <laughs> oh, always rolling just terribly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. See, I overcame. So, I had. Oh, sorry. Oh, no. I, I I just got new ones and they look beautiful. They kind of look like uh, gummy sharks in the sense that they're blue and white, like that sort of color. Hmm. So, okay. yeah, I really like them. I also got One Punch Man manga version, so that was pretty exciting. Nice. Yeah. My brother plays uh, not like D and D, but other tabletop games that use dice, and yeah. he has he is engaged in the practice of dice shaming. Where I yeah. guess you take a picture of your dice, and it's kind of like pet shaming. Um, so yeah, I guess money. he's had some dice that have killed him, and, <laughs> and he yeah, rants about I, it on Facebook. And then, I haven't like, died I, from them, which is like very lucky for me. But they, I've almost I've, I've, team members with a certain pet. <laughs> oh, like there was a joke that um, I have these cool-looking dragon dice. They're the first ones I ever got, and it was like sometimes they'd roll well, sometimes they would not. Like, the D6, D8 for damage usually was pretty high. But mm-hmm. that uh, that 20, a lot of times, was pretty low. A lot yeah. of 1s. Yeah. So that's why yeah. like, I, joke, I jokingly say, I've almost killed several party members. <laughs> but then yeah, um, all, all of yeah. my crossbows, I own three crossbows on my character. They've all broken, like, three times oh. because of my dice. <laughs> oh. Uh. That's lame. 
I know. And there was the thing the other day, which you guys probably saw, that was like, hey, I just, I diplomacyed my way into non-combating the entire dungeon and turning them to our side, and then I triple 20 the final boss. I saw that, that, and same, I was... I did read same that. Dragon wow. Ball, so I was just like... <laughs> mm, Insane. Nice. It was so cool. Nice. <laughs> well, this week is spring break for my son. So he's been down here. He's actually here now. He is a huge Halo fan, uh, which is actually why I'm very disappointed in Microsoft that Halo 5 is not local multiplayer because a lot of my week has been spent just watching him play because the only way I could play with him is if I own two Xbox Ones and two copies of the game and two TVs. And I'm like, no. So no, we play a lot of uh, Master Chief Collection. So we, we still nice. get a lot of our Halo time in. And uh, I just got him Pokemon Yellow yeah. for his 2DS. He, in the past, had watched me play Pokemon, and he'd watched the anime, and he always wanted one of the games. But I was told him, I was like, Caspian, they're very, very text-heavy. And so when you get to where you can read a lot better, then we'll get you one. And yeah, I always figured like I'd get him an X or Y or, or something like that. But then the Virtual Console games came out, and I went, well, okay, I'll get him this because it's 10 bucks, And then that way, if he doesn't like it, I'm only out 10 bucks. Yeah, but exactly. He he seems to be enjoying it. Although, um, like I was telling y'all before we actually started recording, he he is growing up in an age where most games just auto save. So this idea of having to go into a menu and hitting save is not <laughs> something he's used to. And the other night he played the game like two and a half, three hours straight, and he didn't save. <laughs> so his save file says it's only been active for 19 minutes. Um, so sad. <laughs> yeah, but so he's seven, and he just likes playing. Like he he cares very little about progress in any of it. In fact, on Halo Five, he's even though he hasn't beat the game yet, he's played the same level three or four times just because he likes it. So <laughs> this is not something that he's that concerned about. And he's had yeah. the same problem with Animal Crossing, where you know and. If I forgot to save after playing Animal Crossing for a long time, I'd just be like, forget it, I'm not playing this anymore. He just yeah. doesn't care. He, he likes playing the game, and and it's just fun for him. So so that's been really neat. And then um, my my wife uh, saw Caspian and I playing our DSs together, and she was like, oh, you know, like, I wish I could join in. And I went, well, when I bought my new 3DS... Not not a new 3DS, but like the brand new 3DS with the little nub thumbstick and stuff. Uh, I didn't sell the other 3DS. I meant to. I just never got around to it. So I told her, I was like, I still have this 3DS laying around, and, and it's it's fine. There's nothing wrong with it. I can charge it up and, and give it to you. And so she was like, yeah, okay. So I went ahead and did that. Well, uh, so I got my first Street Pass with her. And she is my 666th street pass. <laughs> Better find somebody quick. Ouch. Yeah. Oh, way to go, April. Uh. <laughs> you brought me up to the mark of the beast. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I'm hoping that she that she enjoys that. Now we just got to get her some games for it. Um, but anyway, enough chit-chatting. Let's get into talking about some Pokemon. So uh, mm -hmm. the developer for this is Game Freak. Now, they have done other things, but yes. you probably just know them as a developer of Pokemon. Um, Pretty much. They, a little while ago, they did a downloadable game for 3DS called Harmony Knight or Har Har Harmono Knight. I don't even remember what it was, but it's like a rhythm game, kind of like Bit Trip Runner. Yeah. Uh, I tried the demo. It was okay for what it was, but I was like, man, nah, just stick with Pokemon. You do that just fine. <laughs> Honestly, uh, yeah, and they've and they've of course been very, very busy. Uh, them and Niantic, who developed the game Ingress for oh. Android, they've been working on Pokemon Go. Oh, for, I can't wait for Pokemon well, Go! I'm so I, excited for that. Uh, so, oh. And they just keep saying it's this year, it's this year, and I'm like, yeah, December is also this year, and that's how many months <laughs> away. Ah. <laughs> so it's driving me a little crazy, but um, the game looks really good. The publisher for this is, of course, Nintendo. Mm -hmm. And and real quick, I do want to talk a little bit about that. So it's 
it's a common misconception that Nintendo actually owns Pokemon, and they don't. They are heavily invested in Game Freak and the Pokemon Company, but technically, Game Freak and the Pokemon Company are third-party companies, and they could, if they wanted to, go do whatever they wanted to, including putting a Pokemon game on PlayStation or Xbox. I imagine Nintendo is going to continue to chuck lots and lots of money at them to make sure that never happens. Yeah. But mm-hmm. it is possible. In fact, um, Pokemon Shuffle... That would be so weird, though. It would be weird. Like It would feel <laughs> wrong. almost as long as uh, back when Sega went third party and I got my first Sonic game for GameCube. I was like, this is weird. What is uh, happening? Yeah. <laughs> to be fair, my first Sonic game was on the GameCube. So, yeah. I mean... <laughs> Um, but the uh, the Android version of, or I guess also the iOS version of Pokemon Shuffle, I'm not even sure Nintendo gets a credit on that for that game. I have it. I could check, but I'm not going to because I'm lazy. Um, yeah. But yeah, so just, just to get that out there, these two companies are separate. Uh, similar to how um, back in the day, Rare, you know, they developed pretty exclusively for Nintendo, but... Nintendo did not own Rare. Rare could have gone and done whatever they wanted to, and now, of course, they're owned by Microsoft. So, all right. So the director uh, here, we get to play pronounce the Japanese. <laughs> so I'm going to take a crack at this first one here. Uh, it's Satoshi Tahira. I'm going to guess that the J is not pronounced J, ja, and then it's H. I could be very wrong. Um, but he's also the creator of the game, yeah. and uh, down here in our little trivia section that i've got he yeah, thought of saying like, yeah uh, because he uh he liked to collect insects and as time went on and you know neighborhoods began to develop to more you know suburban and, and urban kind of areas the insect population was going down and so kids as he was growing up were not able to collect insects like he once was so he got the idea for pokemon and that's where the idea of collecting them comes from uh i can only assume that when he collected them he also put them in a ring of death and made them fight because that's the other aspect of this game obviously yeah (laughs) but wikipedia doesn't say that he did so i don't really know so it's just speculation on my part um the producer on that oh sorry yes (laughs) real quick just um a thing Uh um i know uh in the japanese versions of the game like you know how when you can pick up the names you know, one of them is Ash, as we all know from the yes. anime. Right. It actually applies to that as well. In Japanese, instead of Ash, it's uh, Satoshi, which is that name for him. Yeah. And, Interesting. Uh, yeah. That's well, cool. one of the other one of the other names too, like in J- Japanese, was um, you could have as the um the protagonist, like um, Ninten or something like along those lines, and then oh, yeah. for your uh, your rival was uh sony or like something (laughs) along the lines of that just like straight up just yeah (laughs) wow that's fantastic (laughs) hi my name's ninten and i'm gonna take you down sega (laughs) yes just like (laughs) good job (laughs) way to be subtle there nintendo (laughs) uh all right so this game has three producers uh the first one is of course shigeru miyamoto he Kind of gets a producer credit on almost everything Nintendo does, just because he is who he is. And if it wasn't for him, uh, Pokemon never would have been a thing either. Like straight up, he like saw what Satoshi was doing, mm-hmm. and like saw, read the comics originally, because originally there were like little like comics that Satoshi had written and done. Mm-hmm. And uh, Miyamoto was just like, you know what? This seems like this could be a cool thing. I'm Let's going to thing. support you and. Uh, you know what? You should make this, and uh, you do your thing. Like I'm gonna let you do it, but here I'm gonna bring this to this, and we're gonna make a game out of this. And then yeah, yeah. Thank goodness and for that. I know, and Miyamoto's great at recognizing talent in yeah. other people, as well as being a talent of his own. Of course. All right. So the other producer. All right, Nolan, take okay. a crack at it. This one is Takashi Kawaguchi. Couldn't have said it better myself. Nice. Um, he <laughs> did not have a Wikipedia entry, but he did have an I worry, or maybe that was the other guy, but he's got an IMDB entry. It seems like he's 
a lot right. more involved in um, film and anime than he is in video games. Uh, all right, Shelly, well, you got the one. you got the document open there in front of you. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I all right, you can you get that to, last one. You get to pronounce that last <laughs> one here. Uh, Sunkazu Ishihara. Sure. I'm assuming that's Sounds good to me. the closest Sorry, I'm going to get to that. Say right. it quickly. It works better. Should... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's, that's how you, th- you learn my secrets. Of course. <laughs> it's like worse to share. Right. Um, so he is. Uh, he's also currently the president and CEO of the Pokemon Company as a whole, according to Bulbapedia, which is where I usually go for all of my Pokemon news. Pokemon-related trivia. That's yes. right. Um, <laughs> all right, we got an art director. Mm-hmm. This guy's a very curiously Western-looking first name and Asian-looking last name. Yes. Okay. Ken Sugimori. Sugimori. Yeah. Sugimori. There we go. So He's, all uh, the little designs that you see in the game... I assume actually, he gets uh, credit for those. Yeah, he actually drew them up all himself. Like it was him and uh, Satoshi. Yeah, that actually started it. So like yeah. every character design that you've seen, like for yeah. all the generations, it's uh, been by. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow! No wonder yeah. he's gotten to the point where he's like, you know what, ice cream cone with eyeballs in a mouth. That's, that's <laughs> what we're going with here. <laughs> yeah, no, you can tell if it's an official um, Pokemon art piece or official Pokemon sprite or, you know, whatever, because mm-hmm. it's Sugimori. Like, you can kind of tell the art style, yeah. and I think that's really cool. Yeah. Yeah. To to think that he's drone, drawn, drone, that's not a word, drawn, uh, what are there, 700 and something of these things now? 780-something. Yeah, that's So ridiculous. many. It's, it's it's too many. Gotta catch we're going to get more with Sun and Moon. <laughs> I know. Oh, my Yay. gosh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited, another, but also not. I'm just. Yeah. Here's another 109 <laughs> of them. You're welcome. <laughs> At least I'm not giving an extra 200 each time now. I know. It was, oh, at the beginning, it was just like, oh, stop. Right. I need to breathe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm being suffocated. I wonder if you got a plush of every Pokemon there was and laid underneath it, would it crush you? Oh, my God. <laughs> it depends, depends on how, how big, how big the plush like That's true, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like life size versions of every single one of them. Oh Jeez, well, then that's yeah, nightmare. I don't even think about it. Just get Whale Lord, and they'll just crush you away. Say, <laughs> Starlax and Whale Lord, just like <laughs> yeah, <laughs> squish. <laughs> oh, all right. The composer for actually not just this game, but pretty much every Pokemon game to come out since the series started. I'll take a crack at this. Junichi Masuda. And when I looked him up, it seemed like Pokemon is pretty much what he does. It's, mm-hmm. I think he might have a few smaller things on his resume, but it's pretty much Pokemon. And a lot of Pokemon, like the battle theme from Pokemon, has pretty much been used in every single iteration of the game with slight variations. And yeah, yeah. Each, each gen has its own little twist on it but yeah yeah and and then of course there's that uh that little jingle when you go to the pokemon center and get healed <laughs> 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 yeah yeah well yep. you know. uh, <clears throat> uh, and we already touched on who it was created by so you can get this game for game boy it was remade uh at least uh red and blue were not yellow uh they were remade for the game boy advance in fire red and leaf green and I mentioned earlier that they were just recently released for the Nintendo 3DS Virtual Console. 20th anniversary. That's right. This game is 20 mm-hmm. years old. By the way, Shelly, how old uh, are you? I'm 18. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, feel like yeah, I was tw- 11. Well, I was 12 when I got it. Oh, okay, 12. Yeah, because (laughs) I I was 11 when it came out in Japan. So, but I was 12 or 13, maybe. Yeah, I was not conceived yet. That's right. (laughs) My sister was, but not not me. Well, shoot, maybe we should have her on the show. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, just because she's as old as as Pokemon. She knows everything about it. Obviously. I mean, 
No. <laughs> That's how it works. Does, is that not how it works? It, I thought so, but I could be wrong. Uh, these The games were released in Japan as Red and Green on February 27th, 1996. And then internationally, they're all Red and Blue. Uh, so they came out in North America on September 28th, 98. In Australia... On October 23rd, 98, and in Europe on October 5th, 99. And curiously, Australia got it before Europe. That, uh, while, that's, that Europe. Yeah, oh. that's, while that's not so weird today, as we talked about uh, in other episodes of the show, where sometimes Australia gets things even before the United States does. But back that's then, right. that would have been weird for Australia yeah. to get something before Europe. Mm-hmm. So, you lucky Aussies, you. I don't even know if anyone from Australia listens to this show. Hopefully, uh, Maybe. some of our. If they, if they did, they aren't anymore. That's true. Just, they were, <laughs> they were like, them. forget him. How like, dare you? Yeah. Not doing this anymore. <laughs> Unsubscribe. Uh, so, let's talk real quick about the, the version type. So, uh, they were released in Japan as red and green, and. Yes. Um, Charizard and Venusaur would have been the version mascots for that. And then in... Let me get to where it is here. Yeah, so blue, it was really... Green was released as blue everywhere else. And a lot of that is because there was a special mail order edition released to subscribers of some comic called Koro. Koro I don't know. Koro Koro, yeah. Koro. I was thinking like when I read that, I was like, I left something out. Yeah, so Koro Koro yeah. Magazine. Yeah. And that version was used internationally instead of green. Eventually, you could buy blue as a retail release in Japan. Uh, that was in October of 1999. Now, yellow was yellow everywhere in yeah. every, every region that it came out in. And yellow came out because the the... Regular yeah. games and the anime are, other than the fact that they take place in the same region, they don't have a whole lot to do with each other. The story in the games and the story in the anime don't. I mean, like yeah. there's Team Rocket, but you cool. don't have Jesse Team and Rocket, Jane. There's the yeah. 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 yeah, I mean, yeah. when you watch the anime and then you see Ash get Pikachu, and then you're looking at your game, you're just like, well, why couldn't I got Pikachu? Right. And then the Pokemon Yellow, you can. <laughs> and so now. Red and blue, and then if you're in Japan, red and green. You can actually catch, uh, except for Mew, which we'll get to later, but you can actually yeah. catch all the Pokemon in the original Pokedex just between those two games. Yeah. If you ha- if you lived in Japan and you had blue, you actually had to be able to connect with both red and green to be able to co- collect all of them. And the same thing with yellow, because yellow has a few things that red doesn't have and a few things that blue doesn't have. But if you had yellow and you only traded with somebody from red, you wouldn't have everything. You'd still need to find somebody with a copy of the blue cartridge. And that's a lot of what made these games fun was you had to, have friends. Had to trade with people and it was very sociable. Yeah. And and with the advent of the internet and wireless, it's only just gotten more sociable than it was before. Because before, you had to be in the same room with yeah. someone yeah. to be able to do any of this. And now you're just like, hey, I want a Mewtwo. I'm going to go on the internet and see if I can find somebody willing to give me a Mewtwo. And you can get one. And it's mm-hmm. not all that difficult. Yeah. So that's uh, that's pretty neat. But um, I have, real quick. I'm sorry, yeah, I keep interrupting you. Um, so for the different types, in uh, in Japan they had the red and green, like you said. Yeah. Then they like fixed a couple things. They made a couple like the sprites a little bit better. And in Japan they released blue. Yeah. And the Japanese blue is the is the same kind of version that we got here as red and blue. Right. And then there was yellow. Yes. So, yeah, I just wanted. Say that right, right. right. Mm-hmm. Versions galore. Clarify. Yeah, mm-hmm. like if you can... the blue. Th- yeah, so yeah. Right, and then uh, we we actually before we started recording, we actually had a little discussion about whether or not yellow is a Game Boy <laughs> Color game or a Game Boy game, and it seems like not right. even Nintendo can agree on <laughs> what it is. <laughs> what is it? <laughs> because yeah. the because the the cartridge for Pokemon Yellow just says it's a Game Boy game. 
And around that time, there was this thing called the Super Game Boy that you could plug into your Super Nintendo, and it, it kind of gave your Game Boy games a little bit of color, even though there wasn't really color on the cartridge. But then... Played on the TV. Right, and it, it was pretty cool. But then yeah. when um, I bought the Virtual Console version for Pokemon Yellow for my son, it says it's a Game Boy Color game. And then Wikipedia said something about it, and Bulbapedia said something else, so... I don't know what it's for. <laughs> All I know is it's out there and you can get it for virtual console and you should do that because it's great. So, um, yeah, so I grew up playing these games. I, I remember going into my local Walmart and buying a copy of Pokemon Blue and a Game Boy Color. I had a of one of those big, fat, gray Game Boys before. In fact, I think the only version of the Game Boy I've never owned is a Game Boy Pocket. Uh, mm. So, I, yeah, I went ahead and upgraded to the Game Boy Color because the Game Boy Color was already out, even though Pokemon Red and Blue... Pokemon Red and Blue are definitely not Game Boy Color games. That we know. No, they're sure. not. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I, I picked them up, and my brother bought Red so we we could fight and... Trade and stuff, yeah. And all that stuff. And uh, for whatever reason, I never, I'm trying to think, until the Game Boy Advance games came out, like, I didn't buy gold or silver, I didn't buy crystal, It, I just kind of fell off of it. But then, um, when the Game Boy Advance games came out, I bought Emerald and Leaf Green, and I've played every version of these games since then. So I've, I've got the remakes of... Uh, gold and silver and there were remakes of crystal Ruby and sapphire yeah 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 no, Ruby. Well, no. Uh, were there room were there remakes of crystal no, no but the, other the remakes of think so. gold and in uh, heart gold and soul silver they incorporated some stuff from crystal That's like the right. whole following suicune around right yeah, yeah i knew they and, need something to make up for that so yeah yeah and so i've had every version of this and i I've, in fact, I think the Venusaur that's on my, whatever my newest, um, no, I haven't moved everything over to Omega Ruby yet, but my Venusaur is the one that I caught in Leaf Green. I've just been moving him on up. Oh, wow. Yeah, so I've I've had him for a very long time, and that's that's what part of what makes the series really cool, is that it's been built to incorporate the previous generations, yeah. and while you can't Unless you have the Virtual Console versions that just came out recently, you can't go all the way back to the Game Boy version anymore. But you can go all the way back to the very first generation that was on the Game Boy Advance, which is uh, Ruby, Sapphire, Emerald, and then the remakes of Generation 1, which are Leaf Green and Fire Red. And you can trade them on up. And it's, mm-hmm. it's really neat to... It's almost like you have a pet, and he's just been with you forever. Honestly, and, yeah, it's it's pretty cool that they did that. Like, mm-hmm. I'm excited about that. And they they level up, but they don't grow old. They don't die. They're just That's there. Right. <laughs> just there. The worst that happens is they faint. Yep, exactly. And just take it's, them to Nurse Joy. Unless you play, what's that? The Nuzlocke. Nuzlocke. Yeah, well, you what I'm it. currently doing on my oh, actual gosh. yellow cartridge, I'm... Oh, yeah? Much that, don't ever do it when you're tired or distracted. <laughs> I'll cry so much. I I was so sad. I was mm-hmm. oh my Nidoran. Oh, mm-hmm. or Nidoran. Oh, speaking of Nidoran, so back on the first generation of this game, all the Pokemon were gender neutral. Oh, except yes. Nidoran and yeah, and what was the other one? Nidorina. No, Nidoran male yeah. and Nidoran female. Oh yeah, Which and then they the didn't change course. names until they evolved. Oh yeah, right? yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, that's true. And and then it wasn't until when did they introduce genders and Gold, breeding? Silver. Okay, next so the very gen- next generation, they yeah. had every had a had a gender and and you could do breeding and of course most people I would imagine most people just to breed they go get themselves a ditto and some people do but. Then there's I guess I do feel like that. really serious about it. <laughs> yeah. I, I remember being really sad when I was like, hey, I'm going to get a Flareon 
and then breed an Eevee that knows a fire type move and turn it into a Glaceon and then realize that would be the coolest thing ever because Eevee can't be birthed with fire type moves from Flareon and I was like this is crap what's even the point then I don't know you got Flareon well, like in later, not not generation one, but you know later. Okay. Yeah. yeah okay. So no, I haven't even gotten to the point yet where I can even get Eevee. And it, in Gen one, you can only get one Eevee in the whole game, can't you? Someone gives it to you. Yeah, right. you uh, find there's a guy at the top of uh, the apartment complex in Celadon. He's just like, if you go through the back door, it's like, hey, there's this Pokemon here. You should have this. Yeah. There you go. Like, here, take it. Yeah. I love that people in that game are just like, I found this stuff flying around. Do you want it? I'm like, yes, give it to yes, me. Yes, I do. <laughs> <laughs> and then you're just walking in people's houses. They don't give a crap. They just, yep, nope. hello, oh, take sure. this potion. <laughs> <laughs> JRPGs. <laughs> or even worse, when you're like, you dug through the <laughs> trash. Here's a great ball. Like, who threw away this perfectly good great ball? <laughs> Someone yeah. who doesn't appreciate it, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. That would be great if that's where you found the Master Ball. It's just in the trash somewhere. Someone <laughs> you know, threw this away. That was, a, that was a thing. I feel like that was actually a thing in one of them. It, was, it might have been. Maybe not. I don't know. Oh. Yeah. So, uh, well, Nolan, how, did you play this as a kid, or did you get introduced no. to it later? No. Never. I only recently got... No, yeah. I, <laughs> first time they came out, it was like... Because I, I still remember the commercial for the game. Yeah. Like vividly, is basically like you see all the Pokemon like getting on this bus. Bus driver's like, "Oh yeah, hi, hello," you know, and like Pika's like, "Pika," he's like, "Yeah, yeah, okay." He's like, "Oh, I'll be right back," and he steps <laughs> off, and uh-huh. you, then you see the bus is in a uh, car smasher at a junkyard. It just kind of compresses it. Then like as it comes away, you just see the Game Boy color with uh, I think it was red for or one of them. You just mm-hmm. see it's like right there, and that's like Pokemon got to catch them all. It's, and this guy's just like, <laughs> and playing Pokemon. <laughs> just like, he, he just smashed this bus with all the Pokemon on it, just like, boop. Yeah. Commercials in the 90s are weird. Right? Not gonna lie. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, played, I, I played this when it first came out. Like I, mm-hmm. like I said, like, I played Yellow so, so much. Like, it is in my top three Pokemon games mm-hmm. of all time, uh-huh. just because... You know, being able to get all three starters and get Pikachu at the beginning. Um, it was just, it, yeah. This game, these games have made a big impact on my life. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. Like I said, like, I'm like, oh yeah, you find this here. Like, this is very much up there with, like, Ocarina of Time, where I know where you can get this guy and he learns that so you can do this thing. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. So <laughs> um, you. You live and breathe this game, huh? Uh, besides Zelda, Pokemon are like is my like favorite game franchise, and it's a, it's a close second. Yeah. So mm-hmm. it's uh yeah. I, have I, you I, have you ever completed the Pokedex? In any I game? have. Okay. I have. I've done first gen like three times. I've completed yeah. it. Um, I did second gen once, and. Oh. I did third gen once. Wow. It was, yeah. <laughs> That's something time. that I feel like at this point with every new version that comes out, it's like, don't even tell yourself you're going to do this because you know you're not going to because there's yeah, 700 it, of them. Which is why I haven't. I'm like, yeah, I'm like, at this point, I'm like, no, I don't have that much time. I want to devote to that. Like, as right. cool as it would be. Not I'm just even. Like, nah. yeah. like, after mm-hmm. gen three, I just didn't do it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so I, I have done it in the originals, but. Mm-hmm. Beyond, like once it got past three hundred, I'm like, that's that's a lot. Right. So I'm just gonna I'm gonna be done and mm-hmm. I'm like, you know what? Good job. But yeah, hey, I don't blame yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. So. Mm-hmm. Well, Shelly, as we said, you weren't even born when this game came out, but uh, right. so as we discussed on the Chrono Trigger episode of this show. Joel doesn't play JRPGs, and Pokemon is a JRPG, so when I was like, well, who could we get to sit in for him? And I thought of Shelly, and I knew 
that she wasn't born yet when the game came out. But I also know she's a gigantic Pokemon nerd. So I, I thought yeah. it'd be a good <laughs> it'd be a good perspective. I like how, you know, I I'm at the age that I am and I played it and you know, Nolan's at the age he is and he was about five or six years younger than me. So Shelly, what is your experience with the first generation of Pokemon? Well, my first video game ever um, on my first gaming device ever was Leaf Green on Game Boy Advance. I know it sounds like super young to you guys. Like, ah, why didn't you start earlier? It's like, I know I wasn't (laughs) around. Um, I didn't really have much of a choice. Mm -hmm. So I played Leaf Green and I just loved it. I also got gold. Um, I didn't have quite as many memories with that because I'd play Leaf Green more often, but I did Mm -hmm. have gold. Um, Mm -hmm. So... Yeah, I played through that. I still have my Blastoise. I mean, you were talking earlier about, uh, you know, moving your Pokemon up through each generation, and that's what I've done with my Blastoise. Yeah. Um, I mean, I don't know. It's just so classic. It's a ri- original idea that someone just, you know, that people just came up with. And, you know, you just change a little bit, add more Pokemon, add new features, and everyone loves it. Like, I love it. You guys love it. We're all different ages. And I think that's one of the really big appeals of Pokemon. So, yeah, I, after getting Leaf Green, um, I got pretty much every other Pokemon game um, that went up through that. I still haven't been able to play Red or Blue or Yellow, but because they're mm. out on the virtual console, I'm planning on getting them soon. Just yeah. when I have money and time to play it. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah, I, I've gotten, you know, Ruby, Sapphire, and, uh, you know, Pearl and Diamond, Platinum, and, you know, everything up above that. And I just keep playing it, and it's still addicting. It's still, like, I don't know. There's something about Pokemon. Just everyone can get hooked on it, and Mm -hmm. it's just so simple, so. Well, there's so many. It's like you can start over, and you can get a different team, and it still feels like, oh, cool, this is something new. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Mm -hmm. It's just so good, so good. Um, Yep, And, and now... With the 3DS virtual console releases and uh, new versions of it, we, newer generations can play it. Like I said, I'm getting my son hooked on it, and I hope that it's something that he really enjoys. And I think he will. Um, it's hard to tell now because since he's down here with me and he doesn't have an Xbox up in Memphis with his mom, I know while he's down here, it's like I'm going to play as much Xbox as I possibly can because he can play his DS Anywhere. Up in Tennessee, right? So yeah. it, it's hard to tell um, yeah. just how much he's going to like it, but I think I think he's really going to enjoy it. He watched the anime on Netflix for a little while, and and he knows the the characters and stuff. So, um, what when you guys pick starters, who do you go with? I I Charmander. like I like the grass type, so Bulbasaur and and every generation from there. So we got Charmander. What about you, Shelly? Sounds um, like Squirtle. I mean, Squirtle was my first. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm actually playing through Leaf Green again with... I chose Charmander. But, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't know. It depends every generation. I think there's a special okay. special place in my heart. Uh, Squirtle has a special place in my heart just because he was my first Pokemon. Um, yeah. And I don't know why I chose him. I think I just thought he was cute. And... Mm. You know, I wasn't, I didn't really know, like, who Charizard and, like, Blastoise was. I just thought, oh, this is a cute little turtle with a little shell. Like, come on, you gotta, you gotta choose Squirtle. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, yeah, I don't really consistently choose a type. Um, it's just whatever I find most appealing, I guess. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Mine will, mine will vary depending, because certain gens, it's like, okay, the type, the starter you get for this type is like this, and it's like, okay, that's cool. And there's ones like, no, I don't want that. Like, yeah. Mm-hmm. And for also, the most part, I love fire types, but yeah. for the yeah. last couple of gens, the fire starter has not been really all that cool, I guess. That's right. true. So there's, <sighs> there's that, and there's also, you know, taking into account the gym leaders and like, oh, like, oh, yeah. would it be most helpful to have a fire type in the beginning or like how helpful it would be in the end game and like all that stuff. And then there was what I think it was Sinnoh or something where there were like no fire types. So you kind of had to no choose the fire, fire type. Types. Yeah. Until. Um, oh, yeah. Platinum, where they got more. It was, yeah. If you didn't pick Chimchar, you had to get Ponyta. And yeah. that was it. That was just kind of ridiculous. I think they learned their lesson after that. But yeah, yeah, there's quite a few things to take into account. But in the end, I think they t- do a good job of. You know, 
if you choose choose any of the Pokemon, you're still gonna have a good time. So, right. Unless you yeah. pick Chikorita in Gen Two, in which case you're just screwed. <laughs> oh well, yeah. <laughs> That's besides the point. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I'm I'm not really sure why I picked Bulbasaur because now as an adult, when I when I started playing the Virtual Console release uh, a little while ago, I was like, you know, he's he's the ugliest one of the three that you get to yes. pick from. He's, he's you know so who cute. he is cute, but he's not. <laughs> Squirtle or Charmander. Nah, cute. that's true. <laughs> and and you know, and he's a grass type. It's it's like who who wants that? But as I've when I I'm glad that I went that way because one of my favorite ways to battle is throw in Venusaur. First thing you do, get Leech Seed, Leech Seed and Toxic on your opponent, and then either Toxic or um like stun spore or, or just anything you can, and yeah. then just slowly oh. wait for him to suffocate. <laughs> you know, but as long as Giga Drain on everything, and uh, that's that's how I like to play. And it, it drives yeah. uh, when I used to play my brother a lot. It would drive him crazy because he'd be like, "Quit doing." <laughs> you have to be patient, but so satisfying at yep. the same time. <laughs> Finally, and on the, that, that, that last. That- HP off of it. <laughs> that leech seed toxic combo. Gen one was kind of broken in the aspect. If you leech seeded somebody and you toxic, um, like you know, leech seed does a certain amount every time. Yeah. yeah. And toxic will like double the Increase. amount each time. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If you do toxic and leech seed at the same time, leech seed will double the amount taken. Really? Gen- I didn't even yeah. know that. I yeah. That. yeah. It was. It was like if you do that, it's like it just destroys That's everything. Awesome. <laughs> oh, I love it! Wow, you know, I I did do remember because um, I want to say there was no limit to how many negative status effects you could put on an enemy in the first generation. Like they could be poisoned and asleep, and now I'm pretty sure they can only be one or the other. Yes. Like yeah. that's poison. Like yeah. you can't put a poisoned Pokemon to sleep because he can only have but one. But you can status confuse effect. them. Yes. yes. Yeah. You yeah. can confuse them and paralyze them, and that's just as bad. Right. <laughs> yeah. That's the worst thing. <laughs> you, or if you have a game shark and you went that route, you could have something frozen and burned. Oh wow! <laughs> that was, oh my! This is wrong. This is wrong. One with that surfing Pikachu. Frostbite. Right yeah. Frostbite. Right. Yeah. Pretty yeah. much. <laughs> oh. So, was there ever a time when you guys could list all 151 of the original yes. Pokemon? Yeah. In in order? Oh. Uh, at some point, yeah. I, I, yeah, because I, I, like, I used to be able to do it. It'd yeah, be, I'd probably have, I'd at one point there. or another. Not anymore. <laughs> and then, of course, there was the Pokemon rap that was on the anime. Oh, the Pokemon rap! Strung, strung yeah. all of them together. You did get through the entire Pokedex. Yeah, you did. And I used to be able to do that too, but that no, now I can. Now I'm like, I remember oh. that Bulbasaur, you know, and then Squirtle and and Charmander. I remember their Pokedex numbers and of course their evolutions. And then I want to say Pikachu is twenty five. Is he twenty five? It's twenty five. I knew. Okay, I knew there was a five in it. And then of course Mewtwo is one fifty, and Mew is one fifty one. And I pretty art uh, the three legendary birds. I know they're not just beneath Mewtwo because I think One, Dragonair uh, and Dragonite yeah. separate. Teeny Dragonair, Dragonite yeah. lead up. It's 47, 48, 49, so it'd be, what, 44, 45, 46? Yeah. That sounds about right. Mm-hmm. And the fact that we know this without. I, I promise you guys listening, I'm, don't have this yeah. in front of us. Yeah, no, I'm not. <laughs> they're not yeah, it's off our like, head. <laughs> From twenty years of playing the game over and over, <laughs> oh. and, yeah. and now, like, I wonder if there's some kid out there now that can go through the entire National Pokedex as it is today. Wow. I'm sure that would be. I'm sure there are some. I'd be it's, very impressed. That's like memorizing Pi. You know, I know. <laughs> pretty cl- pretty much, actually, yeah, that would be. And memorizing. then I'd want to look at him and go, "All right, Smarty, who's the fourth president of the United States?" And he'd be like, "I don't know," because <laughs> I've got too much Pokemon. Nonsense yeah. going on. Get your priorities straight. You gotta That's know the Pokemon. Right. You gotta. <laughs> right? Exactly. Yeah. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the virtual console releases because those are pretty significant. Because yeah. Nintendo is very, very strict about releasing 
the code as it originally appeared on when it was first released. Like even down to the point where when like a Mega Man game is released for virtual console, they make the emulator have frame rate issues where it would on the hardware yes. it was running so that it I felt remember that. like it was playing. yeah. They, wow. They're very, very strict about this. But when Pokemon came out, they rightfully recognized that some features just would not work. That, And if those features don't work, there's no point in having the game. So mm. they made a tweak where the game link cable stuff is removed from the game. And that's, of course, replaced with 3DS wireless information so that you can still battle your friends and trade and stuff like that. But then they also made the game Pokemon Bank compatible. Yeah. And Pokemon Game uh, Bank, uh, before you could... So, f- like, Fire Red, Leaf Green, and, and then the, that other generation for Game Boy Advance, if you wanted to go up to the next generation, you had to... I think you had to have like two Game Boy Advances, and you you trade them over. No, I'm sorry. The next generation right. was for DS. DS. So the original the DS, yeah, had the uh, Game Boy Game Advance Boy. in the bottom. Yeah, so you'd plug the cartridge into the bottom of the DS, and your DS yeah. game could go in and get it. But then, of course, you couldn't you go had to back. unlock. Yeah, you had mm-hmm. to unlock Pal Park, right, in order to do it first. But yeah, you now, couldn't go back. Yeah, now their plan is to, and it, and it's hard to tell how well it's going to work because we haven't had a new generation yet. But now you will upload your Pokemon to the Pokemon Bank, and then any generation past this that you want to go get that Pokemon for, you should be able to download it. But that won't mean that it's not compatible with your old game. At least I think that's what they've they've said. At least that's what they're trying to do. Of course, oh. when you go ahead. It's probably like the same way, like um, when you could go from like transfer your Pokemon from Gen One to Gen Two mm-hmm. through the quote unquote time machine. It was like you can do it as long as it's not a new Pokemon, um, yeah. not of the new type. Right. It doesn't have any new moves. Right. Kind of yeah. But now I wonder through updates and DLC if they'd be able to patch that stuff into the old games, and if they would. Oh. Because that I feel like it would upset a lot of people, though. It's the only it, problem with that. Yeah, but it would be neat. Oh yeah, it would be. Uh, we'll we'll see. But uh, of course, from generation one to what are we on? Like Gen six or seven or something. We're currently on six. We're on currently on six. Yeah. So there's been a lot of changes to like a Bulbasaur that you get in Gen six is not the same Bulbasaur that you get in Definitely. Gen one. So when you upload no. your Pokemon from the Virtual Console game to the Pokemon Bank, you can only take it into Sun and Moon, which at the time of this recording are not out yet. They'll be out by the end of 2016. Sun and Moon will convert that Pokemon to the the new stats and the new moves and all that stuff. And then from there, you can move them around freely, you know, as long as it's in a Pokemon Bank compatible version of the game. Yeah. Uh, so that's pretty neat that Nintendo made the decision to go in and, and make those changes. Of course, since they did that, the games are not your standard five dollars; they're ten bucks, which I know made a lot of people upset. But I was like, "Hey, they actually went and care. Some yeah. work into it. Like, it's not like they just rom dumped it like they do the other games. Yeah, yeah. They exactly. they went and they did stuff, stuff with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So. Um, and now I. I never had Mew on my Gen 1. I know you could get him uh, yep. through... The, the official way to get him was to go to a Nintendo event, and I guess some Nintendo employee would literally download the character onto your cartridge. Uh, but there's a way to glitch him. And I know that some people have actually been doing this on the Virtual Console version, so the glitch is still there. I haven't decided whether or not I'm going to go do it because I feel like even though it's it's there, I feel like it'd be cheating. Um, no, it's that, not cheating. That's just me. Cough. Definitely oh, I know a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, so there so there were officially 151 Pokemon yeah. in the first generation. 
and you could actually get them all if you knew how to. Uh, Mew, he's he's pretty. I mean, like everybody acts like he's this this super rare thing, but through mystery so gift many, and stuff so like ways. that, he's Man, yeah. yeah. Yeah, a, it was the legendary Pokemon you can get from Mystery Gift. Right. Mm-hmm. So it's yeah. it's a legendaries. I almost feel like they should stop calling them legendaries because half the time it's just download it and there it is. And you don't really have to earn him. And it's kind of lame. That's how most right. of them are. It's like you can't... A lot of legendary... Well, then they also made it... They like separated that now. It's like legendary and mythical. Yeah. Or something. Right. So. There's, there's the ones that you can just get in any... You know, and the games like Ho oh and Lugia, Lugia and um, you know Gen Two. But then there's the ones mm-hmm. like Selby, which is just like how are you supposed to get that? Oh, you got to go to an event. You got to download it. Yeah. Oh, you're not so. you're not a Japanese. It's not a Japanese cartridge. Oh, too bad. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty life. much. <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> so, but it, it's it's neat to see how they've how they've evolved that, and oh, you know, we we haven't even talked about one of the biggest gaming features of it which is evolving your pokemon which Mm -hmm. is half the point of the game so in a typical japanese rpg which is what this is you of course you fight and you gain experience points and you level up but in this game certain pokemon when they hit a certain level or meet other conditions like being exposed to an elemental stone or like there's some pokemon now that as long as it's happy and it levels up it'll evolve which i think is kind of a weird mechanic but it's your friend during, works, during right? the day or night yeah yeah or yeah, or like you said on. with training um because and that was actually back in generation one it was pretty much elemental stones leveling up and trading and i do know that you, so you could take geodude to what's the second form i can't remember uh graveler Graveler, right. He he hit Graveler by leveling up, but then he wouldn't go to Golem unless you traded him. So you could actually level him up and him hit Graveler and then immediately trade him and you'd yeah. have a Golem at, at whatever level yeah, that was. Um, and then some Pokemon that didn't evolve in the first generation, they added evolutions to them in later generations. Um, Onyx is one of those. Onyx was just always onyx in the first one but then in another generation and i don't remember when it got introduced if you traded onyx so in in two yeah yeah if you yeah. traded onyx while he was holding like a steel uh, coat metal coat, metal coat something like that yeah. you could evolve into steelix and was or, generation two when they introduced the dual types uh, they had dual types um gen two is they they introduced in one yeah yeah, okay. uh, Bulbasaur is yeah. grass and poison. Oh, um, really he starts that. off that way. He's like the only one that he's the only starter that has a dual type. Okay, in the baby gen, but uh, yeah, Gen two is when they introduced Steel and Dark. Yeah, and that's they've true. added different types to every generation, and I feel like that's kind of gotten also to the point where it's like it's getting out of hand. Like fairy type, fairy really. type, man, <laughs> I remember. <laughs> I remember when they were hinting so hard at getting a new Eevee evolution, and everyone's like, oh my gosh, Dragon is coming. Dragon type is yeah. coming, and everyone was so stoked. And then, Fairy! Oh. <laughs> it can beat Dragon type. That's I was No so, one asked for that. I was no so one mad. asked for that. Yeah. It was because Dragon is OP. That's why. Fairy right. is only there to, like... So, Dragon is no longer as OP, because Dragon can't even touch Fairy. Mm-hmm. It also makes it so poison is super effective against something else than grass. Yeah. So or or when they go back and they they'll just completely change another Pokemon's type from what it was to something else. Oh yeah, yeah. like all those I, ones that were normal before are now like puffs, oh yeah, this also Yeah, puff. yeah. Uh, and I remember that uh so in Gen one, Charizard was always just fire type, right? Fire did, what, no, did he, he become fire flying? Fire. Okay. No, he was fire flying. Okay. He just couldn't fly unless you had yellow. Right. You Ugh. couldn't teach him fly and and yet oh, you... that crazy. <laughs> there is a there is a comic. <laughs> yes, of, I know what you're talking uh, about. And I don't remember what the comic is, but uh, Red tries to make 
tries to fly with i think it's a scyther scyther it's something yeah. and, you know as big as he is and then it shows gary flying just, on a pigeon on top of a pigeon yeah. flying around <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like come on nintendo you I should wish scyther knew fly that would have been legit i think i saw something with that with um shoot what's that other one with the three heads what's that one Dodrio. Uh, yeah, I think I've seen that too. Where it's flying with Dodrio. Oh yeah, it's just wings. Like it's just like a helicopter. Yeah, yeah. Like a helicopter. That's right. <laughs> oh. Uh, Pokemon. Uh, Pokemon. Did uh? Oh shoot! What was I gonna say? No, I don't even remember. Oh, so uh, your your HM slaves. Who did you guys usually? Oh. I didn't man. have HM slaves. No. My Leaf Green game. I. Gave um, my sand slash cut and dig, and mm-hmm. I probably rock slash or not rock slash. That's not a move. Rock smash. Oh, right. Is that even came back in? I think it was. Yeah. Rock slash. Um, <laughs> rock slash. <laughs> uh, but yeah, sand slash was kind of that. But then I was also forced to make um, blast toys one too because blast toys was the only one that can learn surf in my party. Um, <laughs> But at yeah. least surf and surf. then even waterfall, oh. they're good moves. Yeah. yeah. Surf and waterfall true. and like Yeah. Right. And fly is a good move. But yeah, then fly. like cut cut yeah. you eventually don't want anymore. And rock smash you don't strength you don't really want. Um, I usually uh between Geodude and Zubat, I had all my HMs pretty well covered. And Yeah, I think there's kept- actually in my Omega Ruby game. I think there's actually like, Mighty Anna. I think has all like all their moves are HMs. Mm-hmm. There's something like that. It's just so sad. Yeah, <laughs> like, I'm so, sorry, but someone has to take the burden. <laughs> for those of you listening that don't know, you had these moves that were TMs. They were technical machines, and that was you could teach a Pokemon a move without him having to level up. And that also meant that some Pokemon, like if you wanted your Bulbasaur to learn a move that was a grass type, but he didn't necessarily learn just through evolving, you could teach him another grass type move. Uh, but then you also had HMs, which are hidden machines, and these were moves that could be used outside of battle. So cut would cut down bushes, and surf lets you travel across water. And these moves were necessary to progress in the game. And in the in the first generation. You could once you taught a Pokemon that move, he knew it forever. You, you couldn't. I mean, there might. I know in later games there was a guy who would remove a hidden machine move from your Pokemon if you wanted him to. Yeah, the move deleter. Yeah, yeah. So basically, what wound up happening is you, since most of these moves weren't very good in battle, with the exception of Fly, Surf, and then later Waterfall, you usually just picked a Pokemon you didn't care about. And you had this what the where the term HM slave came from. So you had this Pokemon <laughs> that is like, you're just here in case I run into a bush that I need cut down. Or, or a boulder. Just, or... Yeah, that I need a boulder pushed yeah. out of my way. Or I walk into a dark cave. And although Flash was I don't think Flash was a hidden machine in the first Yeah, it yeah, technically it was. wasn't. It was, it was originally was it? up until um I think it was Gen four. Then it turned into a TM. In which case yeah. Okay, yeah. Rock Smash, which started as a TM, turned into an HM. Yeah, that I knew there was something weird yeah. about that. Um, yeah, rock tunnel and flash. Mm-hmm. Like I, I was like I was impressing somebody because I could navigate rock tunnel in the dark. I'm like just like oh, yeah. know the way to go. And he's like, how do you know this? I'm like, dude, I've gone through this a hundred times. Yeah, please. that's from playing the game too much. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that would be like uh, going through a Zelda game without having found the lantern and just being um. fine. Like, I don't yeah. need this. <laughs> Whatever. Oh. Um, so, real quick, we're, we're running a little long, and I kind of figured that we would, because Pokemon is it's a big, big, big topic. Uh, but I did want to talk a little bit about the cultural impact of these games in this series. So, of course, there's an anime, mm-hmm. which launched alongside the game. Nintendo very much planned those two things to exist together. Um, and this, this of course, was something that other products had done before, but I don't think any of them nearly quite as successfully. Like, Transformers was a toy, and then they made the cartoon to sell the toy. 
Uh, but if you go back and watch the those Transformers cartoons, they're pretty bad. I'm not gonna mm. lie. I like them. They're they're fun because they're bad. <laughs> but, exactly. <laughs> but yeah, and it's it's kind of baffling that Michael Bay was like, let's make movies out of this. <laughs> that sounds like a good idea. Um, Explosions. Right. <laughs> and and now actually you see this more often that uh even though the movie Battleship had absolutely nothing to do with Oh my god, that was yeah. I mean that, that that is why it existed though. Is being oh, for sure. Hell. Games. <laughs> and so you're you're seeing this a lot more teenage mutant ninja turtles is getting popular again yeah. um but but even for a yeah. while ninja turtles even though it's kind of always been around it wasn't something that was just seeping in pop culture pokemon pretty consistently since the game gonna... launched in 96 has been a- around and in people's minds it's been you know kids are playing it adults are playing there's that meme uh, the the target audience of Call of Duty and the people oh, who actually yeah. play Call of Duty and the target yeah. audience of people who play Pokemon. their kids. Yeah. Pokemon, yeah. target audience, kids, but everyone who's playing it is an adult. An adult, <laughs> um, yeah. It's very, very true that that's, that that's happening. Although I would say there's a lot of kids playing. There's there's kids playing Pokemon and there's adults playing For Call sure. of Duty. But it, Dev, if you hop on Xbox Live, it's really easy to be like, so I'm playing with a bunch of 12-year-olds that are all kicking my butt because this is all they do all day this is all they do yeah <laughs> just, what, yeah just like, and mm. then of course there's the the card game which is made by the same company that does uh magic the gathering wizards right of the coast yeah, yeah wizards of the coast uh and the games are actually pretty similar to yeah. each other i I've, I knew a guy who was really into magic, and I've got some Pokemon cards, and I watched him play a game of magic, and I was like, oh, okay, I, it's kind of, it's not exactly the same, but they're very yeah, similar. See, I collected, well, collected is kind of a loose term. I, I wasn't one of those people who actually went to for like the rare cards on eBay, but I would basically hoard cards, Pokemon cards, mm-hmm. and yeah, I had like a huge collection of them, and um, I never actually played the game, though. I just loved the yeah. cards. I like looking at them. And the cards stuff. are really neat. Yeah. yeah, I'd trade them at school with other kids, and yeah, it was just fun. And there's, there's a... been movies. I went to the very first movie, and they gave yeah. you a graphic gave view you that, uh... card. Yeah. <laughs> and that movie wasn't terrible. You no, know, I still a... watch it. Yeah, it's we it's all not cried. Bad. Oh we yeah, all cried. You know what I'm talking about? Heck yes, oh, we did. yeah. Oh, Tears were gosh. shed. Don't, oh my don't gosh, that. that's because Japanese cartoons are like. They just don't care. They're like, I'll make you cry. <laughs> I'll make you cry, and you will love it. <laughs> you will watch it again because you love it. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah, these these games are huge. And, of course, Pokemon Go coming out. I can't wait. Right. Pokemon Go! Oh, I'm I, I take I, over the world. I always joked that if Nintendo ever wisened up and made an MMO, that I was going to quit my job. And I was just, this is what I was going to do for the rest of my life. <laughs> Live action MMO. MMO. <laughs> <laughs> and now uh, Pokemon Go is a thing. And I'm like, hey, it's close enough. It's pretty much <laughs> I'm going gonna, gonna to be like, hey, April, we need to go on vacation to Italy. And she'd be like, yes, that's awesome. And I'm like, and while we're there, there's a Moltres at the top of a mountain that I'm going <laughs> to go catch. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Be like, Man, oh, it's like forcing like, everyone to actually travel. I know like, People go outside saying, hey, get off your 3DS and go outside to catch other Pokemon. <laughs> and I was like, okay, we'll hint towards this to, for you to go and do things and, you know, be social. And it's like, yeah. kept going further and further. Now it's like, okay, now you have to go outside, go outside and do a thing. Right. Uh, don't stay inside. Yeah. Like, yeah. And I'm, I'm really... Back- I'm waiting for the first news story that we get of some kid that climbed his neighbor's fence... Because there was a Geo dude back in his dude's backyard, and <laughs> so he was trespassing <laughs> to play Pokemon. There was that joke, what that like? Um, it was Kyogre was like going to be deep in an ocean. It's like, well, oh yeah. In later news, a group of divers um, <laughs> drowned because. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just like Pokemon uh, Go, James yeah. Cameron oh, like- got his little submarine thing, and yeah, yeah, exactly. Or, or like all of the kids who are gonna like. Get late, go late to class, or even just skip school in general because oh, there was a Pokemon in the back, yep. like in the in the back of the school. Like I had to catch it. 
<laughs> it was going to go away in like 20 minutes. I had to catch it right then. So. Right. Yeah. And I've I've got Ingress on my phone. And the way it worked was... I it, had it. I never it, it was like, used it. Yeah, I, I played it pretty hardcore for like a month. And then I because I didn't do a lot of traveling, it was like, I'm just going to the same place over and over and over again. And it's not very much fun. But the way it worked was you had like national monuments and statues or like the like a fire department you public places and that's yeah. those were the things that you had to go collect and or uh capture the territories and so i'm really curious to see how they handle like is there just going to be pokemon all over the place or yeah. are you going to have to go somewhere like the, i'm sure like yeah it's definitely gonna be interesting said, it's gonna be like right outside but if you go to other like certain landmarks and towns they'll have other ones there yeah but yeah uh, it's they have not been very specific in how how it's going to work in general mm -hmm. they've said you know you're going to have kind of region region locked in a way pokemon so since i live in the pacific northwest i'm probably going to have lots of like water pokemon yeah um and if so i were to lie, go i'm sure yeah but sure i would have to go well. somewhere else yeah <laughs> that's true me um, living on the gulf of mexico yeah. yeah but they they haven't been very clear about how big the regions are or like you know trading that much they've been very vague on details mm -hmm. and so once those details come out it's gonna go crazy so. yeah yeah it's gonna be stinking awesome well i think that's probably gonna wrap it up we've talked a very long time about this so uh real quick before we go i want to tell you guys so at the time that we're recording this it's actually good friday mm -hmm. so happy easter and yeah. all of that stuff of course that's going to be long over by the time anybody hears this but we we in order to fix that problem we are actually taking a break from recording for quite a while because we want to get to where we're recording just days before these go live that way we can play these games with you and i think we're even talking about getting an original gamers cast twitch channel so that we can stream some of these games and you guys can come and talk about it with us and maybe ask us questions to talk about on the podcast yeah. when we record uh but we're, we're still working on all that and actually i think the the three weeks or whatever we have off will give us some time to actually plan all that out and get it figured out and then on the next episode we'll be able to tell you guys about that on the next episode we're going to be playing sonic the hedgehog and not that crappy 2006 game that came out for sonic. xbox 360 <laughs> fast the, the, the original fast. yeah the original fast. sonic the hedgehog uh it's available on the sega genesis and i have written here literally any hardware you might have in your home that plays games and was released after the year 2005 and I'm pretty sure that's not a joke because you can get it for I, PC, I, I you can get it for Mac, accurate. yeah, you can get it for Android, iOS, DS, 3DS, GameCube, everywhere, man. Right, just 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 get on Google and look for it, and someone will sell you a copy for a couple of bucks on something that you. I'll bet if you've got one of those Samsung refrigerators that has Android built into it, you could play <laughs> on that refrigerator. I don't know why you'd want to. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure you could if you did. Probably. So. So that's that, um, and Joel will be with us for that episode. We'll have the gang all together. It's actually been a few weeks since we've had the gang together because I wasn't on the Spyro episode, and Joel skipped Chrono Trigger because he's got this weird thing with Japanese RPGs. I don't know. What's up with that, Joel? Get some yeah. explaining to do. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, let's go through the plugs. Uh, Nolan, where can people find you on the internets? You can find me... Um, YouTube, uh, Bassman214. That's like bass guitar. I say that every time, but I just want to make sure you're not looking for, like, you know, all your bass belong to us. Right. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, you can find me on there for YouTube, and on uh, Twitter is very similar, except it's uh, Bassman21491, which is a crucial difference because someone else has the 214. Yes. So, don't I mean, I guess you can follow them as well. Yeah, it's he fine. might appreciate it, in fact. I, honestly, probably. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you do that. Um, I, it's me on Xbox. Um, I don't remember what my PlayStation is anymore. <laughs> but I don't have it, so there's yeah. that. Um, Icy White Falcon on Twitch and Steam. And eventually I'll get back to like streaming. 
and I can figure out that audio problem. Yep. Yeah. Oh. All yeah. Right. And Shelly, where are you hanging out? Uh, you can find me on Twitch at Shellshock24. Um, like Nolan, I haven't been streaming that much, but I really want to get like a schedule. So hopefully I'll stream and mm-hmm. find a good schedule sometime soon, even though school's coming back up. So I don't know. Mm-hmm. And you can find me on Twitter at the Shellshock24. That's Shellshock24 with the in front of it because Shellshock24 was already taken. Um, punk. So yeah. I know, seriously. Yep. So. Yeah. And you're also on the Geek Center Grace podcast. Yes, I am up. on the yeah. Geek Center Grace podcast. You that, should go that listen to that. That goes live every Wednesday morning. Uh, of course, I do the audio editing for that. And uh, you still stream to the Geek Center Grace Twitch channel every yes, week, Yes, I right? do. Every Friday. 5 to 7. Every Friday. Every and, time. Right, and that's twitch.tv slash geeks under grace. You yeah. should definitely check that out i am on facebook at patch oh, i'm sorry patrick hcp that's right i need to write this stuff down so i don't have to go through this i'm on twitter <laughs> and i'm on twitch and a whole bunch of other places you can find all that stuff in the show notes uh we've also the original gamers cast has a twitter feed that i can't remember what it's called this is why i need to have all this stuff written down i'm gonna one of y'all remind me to do that the og cast that's it we're on twitter we're gonna like i said we're gonna try and get a twitch channel set up we're gonna get a facebook page later on and a whole bunch of other great stuff so anyway i think that's going to cover it start playing sonic the hedgehog and we'll see you guys next week bye everybody Bye. Yas. Yas. <laughs> Did you ever go back and listen to that? Taking all the fun out of everything. <laughs> I wanted to make a joke because we like got done with Spyro pretty quickly last week. I'm like, obviously, that means that Patrick is the one that gets us off topic. <laughs> <laughs>